Hi, welcome to this video. We're going to develop now exercises 6 to 9 of chapter 30. This is the chapter of money growth and inflation. And remember, this is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So, six question sets. If the tax rate is 40%, compute the before tax real interest rate and the after tax real interest rate in each of the following cases. A. The following or the nominal interest rate is 10% and the inflation rate is 5%. So first, we know that we have here that the tax provided by the exercise is 40%. Then we know that the real interest rate should be exactly equal to 5. This is provided uh, by the exercise. I mean, it should be 10%, which is the nominal, minus 5%, which is the inflation rate. Actually, this provides the real interest rate. We know that the inflation rate is 5, so real interest rate plus inflation rate, we have the nominal interest rate that is provided by the exercise. Now, we're going to reduce the interest due to 40% of the tax. So this 40% of the tax of 10% should be 4%. And then after minus tax nominal interest rate should be nominal interest rate minus this tax. So then the nominal interest rate after tax should be 6%. Now after tax real interest rate should be 6% minus the inflation rate. That should be 5%. At the end we end up with a tax real interest rate of 1%. We're going to do exactly the same as before. So the real interest rate should be 6% minus 2. So we have 4. Then the inflation rate is provided 2. And the nominal should be the sum of this previous 2. So we have 6 for plus 2. And then the reduced interest uh, due to 40% tax should be 40% or 0 0.4 times 6. We have 2.4 and the after tax nominal interest rate should be this 6% minus 2%. So we have 3.6% and after tax real interest rate. So we need to subtract the inflation rate that is 2. So then we have 1.6%. C, we have uh, now... Well, this was the example of the of the book. I don't know what was here, but anyway, we're going just to replicate exactly the same as the previous two. So we have the real interest rate is three, four minus one, and then the inflation rate is one. So the nominal interest rate should be three plus one, four, and the reduced interest rate due to the forty percent tax is one point six percent, and the after tax uh, nominal interest rate. So we have 2.4 then um, we have here this 2.4 which would be 4 minus 1.6 and the after tax real interest rate should be 1.4 percent then 7 recall that money serves three functions in the economy what are those functions how does inflation affect the ability of money to serve each of these functions? So the first function of money is medium of exchange. So it means you provide this money and instead of that, you get goods and services. Second, unit of account. So you don't say, okay, this bottle of water is, of water is exactly equal to half beer, for example. Now you said that this bottle is going to be one dollar and the the beer should be two dollars in order to say something so unit of account it's not provided by goods or services so this provided for money a store of value so can be used to transfer money from present to the future obviously you're not thinking about long run we are talking about short run for example if in your wallet you have a couple you know a couple of bucks you you are not worried to put this money now to the bank you can use this one this week next week or even in one month i mean you don't have any issue with that you know that this is going to lose money but not like as representative that you need to go to the bank as a medium of exchange so then what happened with the inflation as a medium of exchange? So imagine 
on inflation and normal inflation, people are okay with the transaction. They even know that the, there is inflation in the economy. They don't have any travel. So they are going to accept your money. Otherwise, is the situation with the phenomenon of hyperinflation. Remember, a hyperinflation is a phenomenon considered that the overall prices in the economy, they increased higher than 50%. So then as a medium of exchange, maybe this is not going to be more accepted because first, you know that if you receive this money, when you want to uh, like change that for goods and services, they're not going to value anymore. So this is not okay for you. Maybe you don't trust in that. Furthermore, imagine the situation of Venezuela when you need to go with like a basket of money because even they, you know, they need to wait the money because it's not a, a, anymore like possible to count it. So this should be an issue with hyperinflation. As a unit of account, again, when you have this one and you need to compute all your imagined, all your like finance statements that you have, like balance sheet, income statement, all the reports that you need to provide, uh, they should be so hard because the unit of account should be a huge zero, 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 million, 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 millions. So then these millions should be not any more easy to compute, to compare. So at the end of the day, maybe the economy should be dollarized. So more dollars are in the economy, for example, for Venezuela, because people don't trust anymore as an unit of account. As a store of value, again, with the short period of time, you know that this money, this, this is not going to worth exactly the same, even in two weeks, even in one week, and in hyperinflation phenomena, sometimes when people receive the wage, they go immediately to the places to, uh, to spend it. Because they know, they are aware that in one, uh, in a short period of time, this money is not going to worth the same as before. Eight. Suppose that people expect inflation to equal 3%, but in fact, prices rise by 5%. Describe how this unexpectedly a high inflation rate would help or hurt the following. First, the government. So we know that there is an inflation expected of 3, but the real inflation is 5. Maybe you can consider different situations where the government should be better or should be worse. I just... Uh, chose the specific one of the wages when they make all the, the payments of uh, of people that depend of government that they they as like professors or maybe majors uh governors senators all those people you provide an increase of three percent because this is the inflation expected but the real inflation is five so then it helps for the expenses because your real increase is just like minus two. I just thought in in that uh, in that specific way, but maybe you can find another way of the government that maybe can help. But from the the, the expenses side, I see that maybe uh, the, the, it helps for the government. Second one, a homeowner fig with a fixed tax rate mortgage. Imagine the situation that you have a ten percent. And now the inflation is 12%. So at the end of the day, you are paying a minus 2% of the real interest rate. So because, for example, you are expecting that with this 12% increase, your wage should be higher 12%. So then you are covering part of your debt uh, with this increase in the inflation. So this is better for a homeowner with a fixed uh, rate mortgage. But obviously taking into account that this person should receive an increase of salary in this proportion as well. C. A union worker in the second year of labor contract. Well, imagine that um, the adjustment of the, the wage is given for the inflation. So this expected should be 3%. But at the end of the day, the real inflation is 5 So then it hurts for that union worker this person should be worse because the real increase of his or her salary is actually minus 2%. 
D. A college that has invested some of its endowment in government bonds. Well, here I, I, I'm just uh, supposing that this is like unexpected. So I'm imagining that the, 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 interest taxes, the interest rate of the government bonds, they don't adjust immediately. So then they don't adjust the real uh, inflation. So what is going to happen in the short run with the interest rate that this person is going to receive should be lower compared with the with the inflation so at the end of the day should be an issue with the real interest rate even if the if this interest rate is not higher than five should be a negative real interest rate uh, then nine explain whether the following statements are true false or uncertain a Inflations hurts borrowers and helps lenders because borrowers must pay a higher interest rate. Well, if interest rate is fixed, it helps lenders and hurts borrowers because as a homeowner, uh, well, uh, the situation, for example, we have, imagine that we have again 10%, we have again 10%, but the inflation is higher, is 12%. You as a borrower, should be better you need to pay less as a lender should be worse so in this order of ideas we said that uh, the borrowers they are better so then this is false i said true but no this is false the borrowers should be better because they will receive for example a higher salary compare with the interest rate that they have so definitely it's better for them so then a is false b if price change in a way that leaves the overall price level unchanged then no one is made better or worse off well this is uncertain why because imagine that your basket of goods uh, decreases so all the prices overall prices of your basket that you consume they decreased so this is better for you you are better However, the other situation should be a guide that the basket of goods increases. So this is not okay. So it depends in which um, which basket or you are consuming. So then you are going to see if you are going to be affected or you are to you are going to be better for that situation. C. Inflation does not reduce the purchasing power of most workers. Well, in the short run, yes. Because when this uh, inflation increases uh, and the wages they don't adjust immediately, so in the short run you um, you affect you are affected for the purchasing power. But if there is adjustment of wages for this inflation, you're going to be exactly the same. Or if you're talking about the long run, uh, we saw that the the monetary uh, situation affect just variable just nominal ones but the real ones they don't be there they're not affected well that's all for these exercises I hope it has clarified your ideas if you have like other situation other ways to answer the question I'm more than open to hear that and please uh, subscribe if you like it share and that's it see you next video bye bye